Eagle Community Television presents Community Connection with your host, Mike Cooper. Hello and welcome again to Community Connection from Eagle Community Television. Thanks for watching. Thanks to our producer, Jeff Durall. We're in the offices of Fort Hayes State University President Dr. Mirta Martin as we talk about events and activities at Fort Hayes State and our monthly Community Connection. Now let's begin with uh, the new provost. We've uh, seen the five candidates. Bring us up to date. Well, from the five candidates, as you know, they've had an extensive visit uh, here at Fort Hayes State University. They visited also the community because we're one. So if they're going to come to Fort Hayes, they're coming to Hayes, America. Uh, and they need to be part of this community, which I have grown to love. Um, and uh, from those five candidates, three have emerged, the faculty and the staff, um, under the leadership of an external consultant and a very hardworking search committee, because they put in inordinate number of hours, both faculty and staff, um, <coughs> brought um, these uh, individuals in to meet our community. And three have emerged uh, at the very top. The, the differences in uh, the scores are inconsequential, and I can work with them. So, you know, I'm very pleased with that because the, the level of intellect and talent that Fort Hayes was able to attract is, is very impressive and it speaks volumes as to who we are as an institution, a quality institution, a, 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 an institution with programs of distinction and people of excellence. And that's what attracted many of these people. Now that we have the top three, um, I'm going to put them through the ringer again. <laughs> um, but you know, it's, it's an opportunity to really see what people are made out of. Um, as you know, in October we started, uh, I appointed a re-engineering task force to look at the things that we do well in this university and to figure out a way that we could maximize our processes, uh, increase our efficiencies, and then discern where it is that we needed to hire individuals to position ourselves to leap forward. Not just walk, we want to leap. And so the reengineering task force provided me with their recommendations about a week or so ago, which we share with the um, leadership team. And, and these are just ideas. They're, they're the culmination of three months worth of a lot of work, uh, a lot of surveys that were done, a lot of focus group, a lot of input. Um, more than 400 faculty replied. Uh, and that's, I'm thankful because, you know, I keep saying you have a voice speak and they're speaking and I think hopefully and finally the the idea that this is our university is coming forward and the staff the same way they're speaking they're saying this is where it is and the task force as you know was made up of the rank and file so to speak the individuals who know the workings of this university not the administrators but the people who make this university who we are today they know what processes need to come together, what divisions operationally, you know, where are these things that are perhaps, if together, could be more focused. And so they've given us their idea. It's going to be a, an intensive process because now the deans and the executive leadership team comes together. We kind of chew it out. We're going to continue to talk about it on how can this new structure work and get ideas, then we're going to ship it out to the entire university community. So everybody hears the whole thing at the same time. Again, just ideas so that they can see. Now with those ideas, now that they've got the entire picture, then they'll go back to their divisions, they'll go back to their colleges, they'll go back to their departments, and they'll be able to talk about it. And they'll be able to, again, bring their suggestions back up to us so we can again consolidate them. Once we consolidate them, we put all of that input together, we'll ship it back down so that they can see it, and then once it's at the university level, we'll begin implementation. So it's a, it, it is a, a holistic process to enlist support, to enlist comments. Well, that first stage is done, and while it's only ideas, what we're going to do is is we've shipped it out to these um, three candidates and said, okay, assume that this is a fait accompli, that this is three months from now that, that you're walking in, as, as that person will, 
and you're tasked with implementing this. What part of this do you not agree with and why? And how would you change it? So give us a new structure that based on your worldview of your various experiences with other universities, tell us how you've seen some things work that perhaps are not reflected in this plan that we have. Because we need to be, we are world ready, you know, and now we've got to become the destination of choice. And after they've done that and explained it, then say, okay, so then the next step is show us, tell us the steps that you're going to take. How would you start implementing this plan? So it's a very real exercise. Yes, what he, he or she has, it, the provost candidate is, is the beginning. It's only ideas. I say to people, it's not even a skeleton, you know, because we haven't gone through the reiteration. But it's a good exercise for somebody. There's a lot in there that will be part of this restructuring. How do you go about doing it? But that will tell us a lot about that candidate as to whether it, his, his way of thinking, his, how he would approach it with the faculty and the staff and the community. Um, you know, one of the things that, that I talked about with these provosts in some of these reengineering, and, and we spent some time together, obviously, was, um, and you've, you've heard me say, when I came to Hayes, I fell in love with Fort Hayes and with Hayes. Well, I'm no longer in love with Fort Hayes. Oh. I love Fort Hayes. There's oh. a difference between mm. in love and love. Uh -huh. I love it. And part of that love, then, what has come out in me is, is the mother, mm -hmm. it's the protecting, it's the nurturing. And I need to protect this university as a mother. You know, you all, the family of Fort Hayes, the students, have entrusted me with their confidence and their love. And from being in love, that in love has matured to just a deep love for the people. And with that comes the mother in me, the protective mother in me. So this hire, for me, is critical because it's not just a partner with whom I'm going to walk to leapfrog this university, because as you know, the, the provost is the second in command. Mm -hmm. um, it has to be somebody who, who is going to be passionate about our students and our faculty and our staff, who, who are going to make them part of their family, part of their love. That, that our, this is, just can't be a job. Mm -hmm. This has to be that passion, that, that wanting to be with family. You know, that, that's what I feel here. And I'm very protective of my family, and I need to make sure that whoever comes, it's going to feel the same love, the same nurture, the same protection. Because when parents give us their children, they entrust us with the most priceless possession. And as a parent, I'm very conscious of, of that confidence and that level of, of trust that they've placed in us. And I need to have a partner that feels the same way and that loves Fort Hayes the same way that I do. Talked a little bit about uh, the Honors College for Gifted Students. Now, this is a, a new idea. Uh, you've been on the road. Let's, let's yes, start uh, at the beginning here. You've been on the road uh, visiting with these young people, the SRPs, as they're called, the Student Recognition Programs which is an extensive program in itself. Yes, it is. And, and you know, it's, 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 um, it's a wonderful opportunity to put our proverbial money where our mouth is, you know. We have the admissions department that goes on the road, the, the VP for Student Affairs, uh, Joylene, that, that's on the road with us. We have faculty from every department. We have deans. And, and in essence, what we go and, and we visit towns throughout mm -hmm. Kansas and, and even some of our neighboring states. So thus far we've been to below it and last night we were in, in Colby. And in essence, and it's wonderful because we invite students and their parents to come and be recognized. These are students, prospective students who may be coming mm -hmm. to Fort Hay State University and we're there to tell them 
why it is that we believe that they should make Fort Hayes their destination of choice. And it really is impressive when you, you realize that these faculty, these staff, these administrators take an evening in the middle of the week out of the kindness of their heart because they believe in what we do at Fort Hayes Day to go tell our story to individuals who may or may not know us. Mm -hmm. And so we go to, to these towns. Um, uh, we've had 60, 70 kids that come in to listen and their parents, so it is large, and some of them are even larger. I understand that some of the larger cities, we get up to two, 250 students mm -hmm. plus their parents, and we recognize them individually. Some of them receive scholarships based on their ACT scores, and so we present them with a certificate that's made out to that student, and we have a photo op, and that photo is then sent to the local newspaper so that they recognize that their town uh, students are being recognized by a university. What's really neat about it is that it is not a fruitless exercise. It takes an awful lot of time from our faculty and our staff, which I appreciate because, again, this is, this is above and beyond the call of duty. But, you know, over 80% of those students that are on that fence because of these trips come to Fort Hayes. So we are attracting students from, out, from throughout Kansas, and that, at the end of the day, is our primary mission, to educate Kansans. This year, in addition to doing that, of course, we're taking on the road our inaugural Honors College, um, and, and it's a unique opportunity for students to be part, to be on the ground floor of anything that's brand new. And so we're reaching out to them and students who have a 30 ACT are able to apply for this Honors College. And, and, and there's a myriad of, of excitement around it because we'll treat it just like one of our learning communities, the students will stay together mm -hmm. so they can work off each other's brain juices. <laughs> um, they will have opportunities to um, do research to, with, with faculty to be part of a community to have uh, and actually to form their own curriculum. Uh, they'll have special classes that are designed for them and you know who knows maybe out of this inaugural class we'll have our first Road Scholar, or a first Fulbright Scholar. Not a bad goal for our new president, I no, think, maybe. No, mm -hmm. that's, that's, we're going to <laughs> reach into those bright minds and we're going to nurture them as we do every student here. Mm -hmm. uh, but that was something that we did not have at Fort Hayes Day. We did not have an honors mm -hmm. college and we have so many bright minds mm -hmm. that we need to just go ahead and, and attract them here. And I'm very, very thankful Dr. Matt Means uh, in three months has done a mammoth job because he has just worked literally 24-7 to create this entity, this idea, uh, to be able to get it on the road. And he's done in three months a work of three years. And the faculty have come forward to help him to say, you know, some of these courses should be like this, and this is what we should do in this honors course. So the faculty is really excited. They're coming out in numbers. So this is not an isolated thing that somebody's doing. It, it has buy-in, there is a need, and there's an awful lot of excitement. And an awful lot of the students are really coming out to the SRPs and saying, Tell me more about it. <laughs> Tell me more about it. So I'm, I'm thankful. And these are already some bright students that very are coming bright. to those uh, student recognition programs. Absolutely. Uh, very, very bright. And this is all with the help of scholarship money, too. Huh? Yes. Um, you know, of course, you know that um, um, we launched the Power of One campaign, mm -hmm. and that was all about scholarships. Um, internally, though, the university and the foundation uh, have been very, the foundation has been very, very generous um, in being able to go out into the community, solicit the, the input of donors mm -hmm. who themselves have been incredible in support of our students and then be able to pass that forward. And so what we've done is we've looked at our structure and, and an awful lot of the scholarships were one-time money, were come and go, and, and, and we mm -hmm. feel very strongly, I feel very strongly, the, the the university feels very strongly that, especially for our students, um, they're very 
conscious of the debt that they incur. Yeah. And while we may have the second most affordable tuition in the country, many of our students today are doing what I did 30 years ago. And I aim to change that. Um, they're working not just full time, not just a 40 hour week. Many of them are working 50 and 60 hours and they're going to school full time. And so to make ends meet, mm -hmm. you know, if you work at full time at minimum wage, 40 hours, you're bringing home about $250 a week. And that's what they do. That's what our kids do. And so to me, it's not right to say, here's a carrot, I'm going to give you $500 of a scholarship, and now that I got you, next year I take it away. Yeah. So we need to tighten our belts in some areas of the universities. We need to create our efficiencies. Mm -hmm. Part of that re-engineering, it's not to build empire. The re-engineering is to give back, to ensure that our students are well taken care of. You know, my hope, uh, my dream is that, uh, and we're looking to obviously begin another campaign, another comprehensive campaign. But my hope and my dream will be that through the generosity of our 68,000 alumni and, and friends and donors throughout the world and, and certainly here in Kansas, whether it's the $1 or the $1 million, that one day we will have sufficient funding to be able to say to a student, if you have a 3.0 GPA in school, we will offset what you're working so that you will only have to pay 50% of what you have to do. So I believe still though they need to work because it builds character. It teaches them the value of the dollar, which our kids already know. I mean, that, that's something that those values, they come, they're alive and well <laughs> at Fort Hayes State University with our students. But it's important for them. And so if we can say to those students, you know, you work 40 hours or you work 20 hours but you keep a 3.0 GPA. So in essence, I'm paying you for 20 hours to study. We will s s churn out a product for the industry to be able to do and their college experience will be that much more holistic. And so we need to shift it. You know, it's great that they work, but they need to also concentrate on their studies. And sometimes, again, you can't do everything. And sometimes, do I put food on the table and buy books or do I get the 3.0 GPA? Not that they don't have the ability, it's just there's not enough hours in the day. And I'm very conscious of that. So there's a bright new world out there, and we're going to go ahead and, and explore it. Jeff says we have a couple of minutes left, just two minutes. He's but not fun. We yeah. have. <laughs> He's not fun. <laughs> but we, uh, now she said that. I didn't say that. But we have to talk about the unique uh, relationship with Dr. Joy Hatch. Yes. who's come on board yeah. in uh, the technology, uh, Vice Chancellor of Information Technology Services. Yes, uh, brand new position, uh, Vice President for Technology, and but well, she was the Vice Chancellor. She's gonna help you uh, with your computer, right? Yes, right. She's, uh, when I break that's stuff, the I'm just gonna go ahead and say, here it is. <laughs> that's the uh, first no, duty. No, actually, it's the, the, the IT department here at the university uh, has done a phenomenal job, but I've got, um, uh, a gentleman, Mark Griffin, that every time I call him is, hello, this is your work nightmare, <laughs> colleague. Because <laughs> I break, uh, so, you know. But Joy um, uh, coming to the university is a great coup for Fort Hay State University because uh, Joy used to run the largest IT system in the world. And, but she has cancer's roots. She wanted to come back. You know, we're all getting to a point where it's not about climbing the ladder. We've now gotten to a point in our life where we remember what it was for somebody to give us a hand up and teach us and inspire us and plow the way for us. Now it's our turn to do that, to plow the world. 
And so she's coming in to work with the very talented people from, from the IT department and throughout the university, be part of this re-engineering mm -hmm. of the university to be able to, again, look at our systems, unite them, bring in new systems, bring in new ways to, to uh, use 21st century technologies mm -hmm. because that's the technology within, with which the 21st century students are going to be going out into the world and to really solidify our stand as the destination of choice for Kansas and for the world. So I'm very excited. Fort Hayes State University President Dr. Mirta Martin, our community connection. Thanks for watching. Thank you.